So, in the last month or so, I've been trying to make a functional drawing software. Since this is my first project using OpenGL, I decided to go easy and prevent advanced 3D rendering techniques, and so a drawing software seemed like a good idea. So generally, to make a software, you need to conceptualize the idea, and by that I mean just like making a video game, you need to imagine the final product before working on it. Imagination. Personally, I wanted to make a very simple drawing window, where I can draw stuff, and then then I will have like a user interface on top which contains panels like saving the file, changing the colors and other cool stuff like that. I personally used Photoshop to get my inspiration. Please Adobe don't sue me if I steal your users. Now after conceptualizing the idea, we need to find a minimal way that will get us to achieve that idea without breaking a bone or hitting a nerve. And by that I mean we need to have tools and understand what each tool does. I personally wanted to use C++ because I wanted to get more comfortable working with it. And I'm also also planning on getting my hands dirty with Unreal Engine 5 scripting and so practicing in C++ is more beneficial for me in the long run. And I also wanted to use OpenGL because for some reason it came to my mind that I should be learning graphics programming this summer. And so OpenGL seemed like a good start to graphics and perhaps a good end, who knows. <laughs> I also used other secondary libraries like AmGUI for the user interface, an STB image library to save the drawings, and the Windows library to get that cool file dialog that you can see in any software while exporting your project. So after understanding what we will be doing and what we will be creating, now it's time to get to work. So the first thing we need is a window, a blank one that pops up once I run my code. I simply used glfw library and I specified my window height and width, and I gave it a random name that popped up in my head that time. Now our window appears, nice. After making the window for my drawing software, I decided to work on the user's input. And so I headed to my callbacks header and I declared three different functions. So one is responsible for the mouse, the other for the cursor and the keyboard keys. And then for debugging purposes, I did some printing. For example, when the left mouse key is pressed or released, or to get an idea of the cursor's position, or to get notified when the user presses a keyboard key. So to achieve this, I used some predefined functions in glfw library, which I copied from the official web. And now, when we move the mouse, we get the coordinates of the cursor. And when we left click, we get a notification. And also, when we press a keyboard key, we get the ASCII code of that letter that we pressed. So after finishing working on the user's input, I decided to work on the brush that we will use to draw and so I decided to work with a basic circle so I made this function which approximates a circle that is made out of 30 triangles I mean 30 vertices so to do that I started off by calculating the angle of each vertex and then I used this angle to calculate the coordinates on both x and y axis using some very basic trigonometry as you can see in the equations above but here we have a problem we don't really know the coordinates of the center yet well, since I wanted the circle to follow the user's cursor, in that case, I used the coordinates of our cursor as the center of our circle. So I converted the cursor coordinates to normalized device coordinates between minus 1 and 1 to keep it independent from the screen resolution. Now it's time to work on the rendering to make that brush visible on the window. So what I did here was I gathered all the vertex coordinates in a vector because we need to pass this information to our hardware. In the case of rendering, we are usually working with the GPU. And so I sent those coordinates to my vertex buffer object function, which I created here. Basically, this buffer stores the position of the vertices of our circle. You can think of it as a game inventory where you keep stuff. In this situation, we are keeping the vertex coordinates. Next, I used the vertex array object to identify the attributes of our inventory. In our situation, we only have one attribute, which is position. So, while working on the rendering, here for my GL enumerate parameter, I set it to be GL triangle fan, which can be confusing. So basically, after we draw the vertices of our brush stroke, which is a circle, now we need to make that circle filled with the color that we choose. For instance, GL triangle fan, as the name suggests, it will connect each two vertices to the center of our circle. And we keep doing that until our circle is filled with the color that we chose. And that's pretty much it. Also here, I'm using currency 
circle and circles, two different vectors. So basically here, current circle is the one that follows the user's cursor and circles are the one that get drawn on the screen when the user left clicks. And now, this is the result that we got so far. Of course, this is just the beginning. We are surely going to work on more features and fix some problems, like this one for example. But overall, let's just appreciate what we have now. So now it's time to customize it, add more features and make it more appealing. I want to make a palette which the user can use to pick a color. But to do that, we first need to understand the fundamentals. So for instance, to change the color of our brush we need to work with shaders more specifically we need to send the vertex data of our brush into our vertex shader code which will take it as an input then in our fragment shader code we need to specify the color of the pixels that are rendered based on those vertices next we will read these shader files compile them and combine them together in a shader program and finally make this shader program the one to be used in rendering the vertices of our brush and now if we look as you can see the color of our brush is is red. If we change this, now it's blue, and so on. So previously in my drawing software, I had this little problem. When I moved my cursor a little fast, I always had this little gap between the dots, which made it look like I was spraying salt. So I figured this out by doing some mathematics. Here I considered two cursor positions, the current position and the most recent one and between them there is this distance. So to calculate this Euclidean distance, I simply followed the formula. And then I used this distance to calculate how many circles can fit in here. To do that, I divided the distance that I just calculated by the radius of the circles. And that's pretty much the idea. Next, I used this for loop to calculate the interpolated positions, or you can simply say the center of the circles that I just calculated. After getting our drawing software to work properly, now it's time to add more functionality. So I added this section which contains these empty panels. For instance, we have this panel called file where we have the option to save our drawings or change the color of the background and other stuff like that. And here we have palette. So when you click on that, you will have like a palette where you can choose a custom color. We also have a section called the brush. So in this section, you will have the option to change the brush size and stuff like that. So in the UI section, I added new options under the file menu. First, we have save as PNG. So to achieve this, I first created a function that is responsible for returning pixel data. Since we have our height and width in pixels, and we know that each pixel has a color assigned to it, which is represented as a vector of four, then we simply do the multiplication. And we also need to make sure to tell OpenGL to read pixel data from the front buffer. After that, I use the Windows library so that when I click on save, I get a file dialog where I can save my drawing at. Once I specify my file destination, then I will check if the user specified the file type if not then it will assign it as a png and then we will save the captured frame buffer pixel as a png image file which i achieved using the stb image library but here we have a problem as you can see so i will see what i can do about it in the next videos next we have reset so for example let's make a very simple sketch and now if we hit reset as you can see the canvas becomes clean i achieved this by adding one single line of code in my reset drawing function and then i simply called this function under my reset item in the user interface now for the color mode i wanted both the ui and the canvas to switch between dark and white modes for the user interface it was very simple since there was already a built-in functionality that handles that and for the canvas i simply assign the colors manually but now we have a problem when i click on the ui as you can see i leave traces on the canvas so i fix this with a very simple if statement in my function that takes care of the cursor's movement on my window so just before checking if the user is left clicking or not i made an if statement that checks if the cursor is hovered over the ui well if that's the case then return nothing without the need of executing the code that draws and that's it it. Now if we try to click on the UI, as you can see, we no longer draw on the canvas. But if we move away from the user's interface, now we can draw without any problems. I guess now it's time to work on the colors. For now, we can only assign a color to our brush from the shader code, which is not ideal for a drawing software. So here, what I did, I assigned my initial brush color to be white, and then I headed to my UI section and I created a color picker using the built-in functionality in the AmGUI library. And then in my shader 
shader code, I set the brush color to a vector4 variable, which I then linked it with the color we picked in the UI. So the reason I did this is to ensure that the selected color is applied to the rendered brush. And now if we try to draw, as you can see, we can pick a custom color and work with it. And if we change the color, well, the entire drawing changes its color. But no, this is not a bug actually. It's a new feature, trust me. Now we're getting to the final stages of our software development. So I added this slider using a GUI library and I linked it with my brush size so that when I move the slider, the brush size changes as well. And of course, I added an icon because what is a drawing software if it doesn't have an original identifier and a name? So I imported that image using the STB image library. And now this is the final product. Hey Google, play some cinematic music, please. By the way, you might be wondering what's the role of this draw section. Well, actually, I was thinking about implementing machine learning to my project, you know, like making the prediction system where you draw stuff and it tells you what that drawing is, but it felt like a long process and the video would take forever to make. Maybe in the future I will add that, but for now I wanted this to be short and sweet. So if you made it till here, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in next projects. See you.